This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, and especially at the moment, I do hope you're well. Uh, so, what have I got for you today then? Well, it's five essential tips for novice or beginner guitar players. If you're thinking about learning to play the guitar, or if you've just got your first guitar, then this video is for you. These are all uh, little things that I picked up and kind of discovered the hard way through being self-taught, and now hopefully you won't have to learn it the hard way. You can take advantage of my experience. So, let's get started with... Break chord changes down into individual movements. That's right. Once you are in the position where you know a couple of chords and you need to kind of start switching between them to play your first ever song, then it is absolutely vital that you memorize not just the chord shapes, but the moves necessary to get you from one chord to another. The worst thing you can do is to try to make all of your fingers go from one chord to another. If you're trying to make three or maybe four fingers go from three or four different places to three or four other places all at the same time, you're going be like that guy um you know the, the kind of uh, novelty circus act the guy spinning plates on top of the poles one of them's going to go clatter on the floor and it's not going to go right so i'll tell you what here is um a little snippet of a video that i recorded years ago just on my uh, webcam and this is uh, something that i still give to novice guitarists today on how to change between an e chord and a d chord Okay, what you do first of all is get these two fingers out of the way, leaving that one in place. Slide this one along to the next fret up, and then replace those two like that. That is how you get from an E to a D. So there's E. Move these two fingers, slide that one up, and place these two back in the correct places for D. So you can see the idea is you find the finger which leads the chord change and then providing you've memorized where your fingers are going to, providing you've memorized your destinations for your fingers, then the other fingers will kind of see where your, um, your first finger has moved to and think, okay, now I know where to go and they'll just kind of follow on you know automatically but if you're trying to think of three different fingers going to three different places at the same time that's when it's go going to go wrong so break it down and master each move individually and eventually they will all start happening together next don't waste time memorizing loads of strumming patterns that's right, you only need two strumming patterns. One of the things that frustrates me is when I get people who've learned a little bit, but not quite enough to kind of be able to play songs, and they've got a head full of strumming patterns that are going down, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, and a whole string of downs and ups. Here's the thing, if you do a downstroke across the strings, before you can do another downstroke, you've got to do an upstroke, and that is the key to it. It's about maintaining a simple down-up motion. Uh, that you can uh, use in time with the beat of the music. Here's what I mean. If you're just basically doing a downstroke, then an upstroke across the strings and hitting all the strings, um, or hitting all of the notes in the chord, rather, on each down and upstroke, it'll sound like this. And once you've got that mastered, you can start creating variations and lots of different strumming patterns simply by missing the strings either on the way down on a beat or on the way up on a beat. Maybe it might sound like this. Or this. Or even this. And all of those uh, strumming patterns that sound, you know, slightly different from each other uh, are all based upon that same down-up technique. 
If you're going at a slower tempo where you've got more space between the beats, then you need to do more strums between the beats, but it's still just kind of down, up, down, up, okay, all the way. What you're going to hear now is instead of doing a downstroke and an upstroke on each beat, uh, you're going to be hearing down, up, down, up on each beat because the tempo is slower and therefore there's more time to fill up in between each of the beats. Sounds like this. And once again, you can create lots of variations simply by missing some of the down or up strokes. You're still doing them. You're just hitting thin air rather than, you know, hitting the strings. You might get something like this. Or this. Or this. So there you go, lots of different varied strumming patterns that are all coming from essentially two techniques. One is just going down, up on the beat, and the other is going down, up, down, up on the beat. So there you go. That's all you really need to master in terms of strumming. Get the basic kind of motion of locking in with the beat and going down, up, down, up, whatever it is, uh, in time with the beat, and then you can create an infinite number of strumming patterns uh, based upon that that you then don't have to go out and memorize and have a head full of down down up up down up up down down up that kind of stuff next Learn to tune your guitar by ear. Yes, indeed. Learn to tune up by ear. Uh, this was how you had to do it when I was learning, and we're talking about the late 70s here. Um, electronic tuners were available, but the, you know they weren't particularly affordable, especially for you know uh, a young 11-year-old like me, like I was then. Um, so what we did was you had some kind of tuning reference, like in my case, it was a pitch pipe, a little harmonica with um, the notes of the guitar on it. And usually one of them <laughs> on a pitch pipe was actually the, the right note. It was actually in tune. So what you would do is in my case, it was the sixth string. Uh, note on that little pitch pipe that was uh, accurate so I would tune the sixth string on the guitar to that note and then use the fifth fret on the sixth string to tune the fifth string then the fifth fret note on the fifth string to tune the fourth string the fifth fret note on the fourth string gave me the note I needed to tune the third string and the fourth fret note on the third string gave me the note for the second string to tune to and the fifth fret note on the second string gave me the note to tune the first string to and that was just what you had to do and without realizing it I developed a good ear for being able to tell when a guitar was in tune, which has all kinds of benefits later on. You know, when you're trying to figure out what chords are in a song by ear, being able to tell whether you're playing the right chord for the song or the wrong chord, being able to tell whether you're in tune with the song or not, I was sowing the seeds for that skill by learning to tune it by ear. When you get into the realm of playing lead guitar, you know, string bending is um, something that these days I notice quite a few people struggle with getting a string bend to sound in tune. And usually when you dig into it, it's because they've never uh, got into the habit of tuning the guitar up by ear. So... You know, tuning the guitar up by ear, it helps you get your guitar in tune, it helps you tell when your guitar is in tune, and it has other benefits later on for when you get a little bit more advanced and need, um, you know, basically a good set of lugs on you to be able to tell uh, what you're doing musically. So there you go. Next. Be stubborn. Yep, you've got to be stubborn. You've got to be determined. There are going to be things that the first time you attempt them, you think, I am never going to be able to manage this. This is impossible. I might as well give up now. I promise you, you can do it. Okay? It just takes perseverance and a real 
analytical eye for detail if you can't do something analyze why you can't do it is it one finger that is refusing to cooperate is it you know a particular chord change that you are uh, struggling with you know well don't start going through the song again and again and again and tripping over that same curb every time you come to that chord change practice the chord change by itself going back to what i was saying earlier about you know kind of breaking chord changes down into individual movements you know do that kind of drill down into what the problem is and try and solve it get yourself a teacher if need be and you know get them to uh, cast an eye over what you're doing and maybe someone else's perspective can just give you that little uh, insight into what it is that you're doing wrong and maybe you know you can move past it but i promise you no one that can do this no one who is a virtuoso guitar player has any more muscles or bones or tendons in their hands than you have so if they can do it you can do it you've just got to press on and persevere and be stubborn next be realistic yes to sort of temper the uh, the, the last point uh, it's important to be realistic you know if you are learning to play the guitar because you are a massive Guns N' Roses fan then don't expect to be playing the solo from Sweet Child of Mine in you know lesson three or four don't even expect to be playing the chord changes from that song that early you know you have to pay your dues you have to serve your time you have to build up the basic skill base that is necessary for playing any musical instrument uh, the guitar included and you know that is going to involve playing songs that maybe you aren't particularly enamored with you know my first song that i ever learned on the guitar consisted of two chords d major and a7 skip to malu yes indeed that's what you had to kind of learn back then it, it came in this little um song book that came with the guitar and a little tuition disc that i got with it uh you need to get the basic core skills nailed before you can start building upon them there's a reason when people People go to art college that they don't start off by painting you know masterpieces on a par with constable and turner and leonardo da vinci you start off by drawing an empty wine bottle and a bowl of fruit because you need to learn those basic core skills that are essential that you can then build upon so be patient and be realistic and you will get there i promise you so there you go those are my five tips for novice or beginner guitarist um, if you've just bought your first guitar or if you're thinking of uh, getting one it is an immensely immensely rewarding way of passing the time and maybe even uh, generating a livelihood out of it you never know do you um so with that i'll just bid you all good day for now uh that's all i've got for you today hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not give me a like while you're at it i'll just remind you that uh we're on the downhill slope towards friday now there we go it comes around again tomorrow is friday and you know what happens on a friday don't you beer yes we have the um regular 5 p.m live stream 5 p.m uk time on a friday we all kind of gather around the campfire and have a have a beer and a chat and it's an immensely good way immensely fun way to uh, kick off the weekend and i hope to see some of you there and uh while we're talking about beginners uh one thing that you might want to consider getting hold of is one of these things a fret zealot tuition device little uh, strip of leds that fixes onto the neck of your guitar and is um it basically lights up and tells you where to put your fingers i've used it with a lot of my uh, novice students and it's uh, massively helpful for them and you know they learn a lot quicker and if you fancy getting one use the discount code on screen there the purchase link is in the description and you'll get a little bit of money knocked off thanks to me you're welcome and with that i'll bid you all a good day say thank you for watching thank you for your time and i look forward to seeing you all again next time around stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now folks